That's another edition of the Muck and Grind Show at muckandgrind.tv. Here's your hosts, Caleb Morgan and Vince Comunal. Welcome back to the Muck and Grind Show once again, muckandgrind.tv. I'm your host, Caleb Morgan, being joined once again by my good friend. I'm Vince Comunal. You can find me in Stan Fischler's Fisher Report or on Twitter at PGHVC. We better get right into this. We got maybe a week, week and a half left before the playoffs. Teams have five, six, seven games left max. Coming out of the wire here, we talked last week about the race in the East. Yes. Looks like the Winnipeg Jets have fallen off the face of the earth, and we had a huge Buffalo-Washington matchup. They were tied for eighth coming in. Buffalo lays them out 5-1. to one. Who is going to pull this out and become that eighth seed? I think uh, the Sabres are going to end up pulling this out. Um, I think the Capitals proved by getting blown out at home that they're not a playoff team. I mean, last week they blew a 3 nothing lead at home to the Jets. Uh, this week they get blown out in probably the biggest game of their season, 5-1 to one at home. Um, and uh, i got to be honest, Buffalo is the ace seed. could be scary with, uh, with mm-hmm. uh, Ryan Miller and goal. You never know what's going to happen. We've seen it before where a goalie gets hot in the playoffs and uh, – they could win a few rounds. Miller, I think, made, I think it was 44 saves or something like that, 40 plus saves against the Caps. Just like you said, the Caps have now lost. Basically, they've had two playoff games against the two teams they're chasing for that eighth, and they've blown both of them. They got a point out of the Jets game. That game against the, against the Sabres, they're at home. Every, they give them five goals. Four out of the five were defensive collapses. Odd man rushes for three of them, and on a fourth, Vanek came in as the third man in to blast a rebound home, right. whereas the, four, the the back checker was two steps behind him. You can't have defensive lapses like that when you're in a mega game like this. If it happens once for the first goal, you should correct that before it happens again. I don't know how you can have an excuse like that at home in such a big game. Well, that's the even more disturbing thing that it, at home, you can't mm-hmm. get up for these games. You get the basically the two biggest games of your season at, at home and you blow a 3 nothing lead in one and just get blown out of the building in the other one. They're, that proves to me that they're not a playoff team. Sabres five straight though now, seven, one and two in their last 10 points in nine of the last 10. You can't underestimate Miller, like you said. We've got, I, I never want to est- underestimate Lindy Ruff, even earlier in the year when people right. were calling for him to be fired. A Lindy Ruff team always competes, always hangs in there. And they had stretches this year where they were really bad. Really but bad. But they hung around. They hung around to the point that a couple weeks ago, it was like, oh, Buffalo's not really out of it yet. And here they go, sneaking up, sneaking up, sneaking up. Like you said, man, I, they might be a good match for the Rangers. If the Rangers stay number one seed, they're eight. I don't think the Rangers are going to go as deep as some people think, or as the number one seed might right. tell you they would, and Buffalo may be that matchup that could pull an upset. Hey, even that's not even, If the Penguins were to get the number one seed, that might not be a good matchup for them either because uh, a little bit longer than a month ago, the Sabres embarrassed the Penguins. I think the final score is 5-2. to two. Now, uh, Granted, that was Brent Johnson in that, and then Flurry <laughs> had to come in after 3 nothing, but... Uh, Hey, any team that has a hot goaltending, it's a great equalizer in the playoffs. They they could Buffalo controls their destiny now. They're two points up, same amount of games as the Caps. They've got a uh, two games against Toronto in their last five, but they also play the Penguins, the Flyers, and the Bruins. Tough games there. I think the last game of the season is against the Bruins. It could come yeah, down to the wire there. A tough divisional matchup. Caps, though, on the other hand, if you want to look at something uh, to look forward to, the, allegedly getting Backstrom back for their game in Boston Thursday night. That could be something that pushes them, but still, they just put themselves in a hole. They're two points down with the same amount of games, and you don't play Buffalo anymore, so you've you've got to right. make up some major ground in five games. Yeah, I mean, Backstrom could spark them. I mean, not that I'm comparing Backstrom to Crosby, but, I mean, look, look what it did for the Penguins when Crosby came back. That seemed to really spark them. So, you know, anything could happen, but, I mean, even if the Capitals do get in, they're still not a playoff team because a, a playoff team would have won those games or at least not blown yeah. a three-goal lead. Yeah, yeah. if they get in now, they're going to need major help, and you don't want to back into the playoffs like that. It's happened for other teams where they've gone on runs after that, but it looks ugly right now. It's not looked good at any point this year for the Caps. Not much hope, but even less less hope for the Jets. They're, they're, they're I think, like six points out now or what is it? 
I forget how many yeah, points they're, they're back they're, now. Yeah. They're pretty far back. They're actually, uh, the Lightning are only one point behind them. Now. Yeah. So it's it's pretty bad. The, the Jets have been grounded. Um, w- would have been a great story, great atmosphere, but they're... Yeah, I mean, in, uh, to a certain extent, maybe that travel schedule caught up to them. It's, it's actually not even the toughest travel schedule in the league, but just the, the back and forth and... Uh, the, their road record is what killed them. Yeah, I mean, they, they were great at home. Um, I know they, they did lose to Ottawa in their last home game, but uh, that you know you win eleven games on the road all year. That's uh, that's the recipe for not making the playoffs. Well, at least Winnipeg's got a team to cheer for, but not probably not in the playoffs this year. Right. We got to let's move out west, which we haven't talked about yet. There are six teams vying for three playoff spots. The three seed, which is the Pacific winner. The seven seed and the eight seed. Four of those teams are from the Pacific, right. but we got six teams going for three spots. It's absolutely nuts. Every night, some teams win, some teams lose. Nobody gains any ground. It's a giant cluster. Five of those six teams playing Wednesday night. Who do you think, if you had to pick three of those six, pick three that are in because three are going to get left out. Who do you think? Well, first, I just want to say, I, I don't like the way the playoff fit format is right now, and this could turn into a whole other discussion, but uh, the other night, San Jose went from the nine seed to the three seed. Mm-hmm. There, there's something inherently wrong with that. I, I feel like if you win the division, okay, you're guaranteed a playoff spot, but you're not guaranteed one of the top three seeds. You should you should win get something for winning your division, but you shouldn't get one of the top three seeds. I Yeah, I'd have to agree with that it, on the same level we saw in the NFL last year where the Seahawks won their division and got a home playoff game with an 8-8 eight and eight record. Right. It just seems unfair when a terrible division, just because you won that terrible division, just because nobody's good doesn't mean you win something for winning that. I didn't right. have to agree with that. But who, who do you think we got here getting in? Uh, you know, I think Colorado's going to sneak in there. Um, they've had pretty, pretty you know, hot streaks and cold streaks this year. Uh, they, they've got a great rookie in Landis Scott. Um, uh, Dallas, they could. I think that they're gonna sneak in, and then San Jose. They, man, that team every year with them, <laughs> they they have so much talent, and you know usually it might be different from them this year because usually they're in that one two seed, and then they blow it in the first or second round. Maybe they get in this year as the eighth seed and do some damage. So maybe this is a good thing for San Jose if they sneak into the eighth spot there. Yeah, I've got I've got two out of the same three. I I think. I think it's Phoenix, San Jose, and Dallas are going to get in. I think, um, or no, you, you said Colorado. I yeah. got Phoenix, San Jose, and Dallas in. Here, I'll talk about the three teams who I don't think are going to get in. Okay. I think L.A., as much as I like L.A., I yeah. love the route for L.A. So many ex-flyers out there. A good story when they got Richards, looked like it would turn around. Their offense is dried they up again. They can't score at all. Again, when Carter came for about a week or two, they started scoring and started winning, went on a streak. Mm-hmm. Now, they have I think they've been shut out twice in their last three games right. before Wednesday night. What is going on there? You've got to score goals if you're going to make the playoffs. They can't have that this late <laughs> in the season. Moving on to Colorado, exactly what you said. They've had a hot streaks and cold streak. They're too inconsistent. I don't know if they could pull it together and win their last five in a row or four of their last five. Calgary, same story. I don't like what's going on with that team. Jay Feaster's got to rebuild in the offseason. And same thing, too inconsistent, too wishy-washy. I don't think they're going to get in. Yeah, I agree with you with Calgary. It just doesn't seem like that they have a plan on what they want to do with that team. You know, they got these... A couple young guys, but they got a lot of veteran it's guys. Mostly that old they guys. Thought that, that, that they thought that they could maybe recycle and you know uh, come and play with a Ginla. But uh, yeah, that team is probably better off starting over than thinking that they're a playoff team that's going to go far. Yeah, just like you said about the Sharks. I mean, how how could that talented of a team not get in? And sure, they're the three seed, like you said, right now they should be battling for that seven and eight. How could they not get in? They're just too talented and too veteran, been to the dance too many times to not get in, and they're just struggling and just limping yeah. through it and look like they have no motivation. I don't understand it. Yeah, I mean, like I said, maybe maybe they get in as the seventh or eighth seed. More than likely, they're going to be the three seed, though. And, you know, maybe they get, go in that way. They don't have as much pressure on them, and maybe they do better. Who knows? No pressure could help. Yeah. All right, this was happened late last week, but we haven't talked about it yet. Duncan Keith. Throws the elbow right to the kisser, bam, right in the kisser to uh, Daniel Sedin. Five game suspension laid down by Brendan Shanahan. What do you think here? Keith has not been ever suspended before, no discipline before. He'd find ones. Five games, you okay with that? 
I am. Uh, first of all, the bad blood between those two teams is wow. Yeah. <laughs> There's been some pretty ugly incidents. Between well, that's them. what happens when you play meet in the playoffs a couple yeah, of years in a row. Exactly. You know, there there were so many things wrong with that hit that it does. I think it does warrant five games. It, the, the, a the puck was nowhere to be found. Yeah, the puck it was, was up completely in the air out of the play. B he elbowed him in the face. C he really kind of high sticked him because not only did he elbow him, but his stick was up too. Um, there were a number of things that could have happened there, and I, w- I was actually shocked that they only gave him a two-minute penalty in the game. It, it might have been because the refs didn't see it. I don't know, but, right. I mean, there were several things he, that, he, that he could have been called for in that play. The refs must not have seen it because the play went on. The play continued down the ice. Yeah. Vancouver got a shot on goal after that, and the refs didn't stop play until after that. So they obviously didn't see it. Yeah, you got it. You got to give him at least five games here, even though he's not been suspended before because – if he had had a history, he I would have loved to have seen if he had, could even get double-digit games. Yeah. But because he didn't have that history, I mean, this is direct, blatant, fra- flagrant elbow yeah. right to the head. Oh, did I mention he left his feet, too? Oh, I didn't, I didn't catch that. I'll have to it watch not, that again. It's not, you know, five feet off the ice, but he, he came off the ice a little bit. I mean, he yeah, he stops. Sedin stops and turns. There's a gap, and he still comes through with the elbow right to the face. This is exactly what the league has wanted to get out. Right. Leads to a concussion. Sedin's out indefinitely now. Nobody knows what's going on. They've confirmed it's a concussion. So they've they've got to. They've got to say it because if it was a closer play battling for a puck, sure. But like you yeah. said, puck wasn't there. There was, a, there was a lapse in the play almost, and he just leads through with that elbow right to the face. Right, and there's no – if you watch that play from beginning to end – there's no effort on Keith's part. He's not even looking around to see where the puck is. Mm-hmm. He's just, okay, I'm going to hit this guy. Yeah, you could tell he wanted to get him. Like you said, there's bad blood. Earlier in the game, Sedin sort of got Keith up high on a very innocent play, just finishing, lightly finishing a check the yeah. way the Sedins do. Sort of got up high, and you could tell Keith remembered that and said, I'm going to get this guy back. He got the perfect opportunity, but he's going to sit five games for it. How about this? Elliot Friedman of CBC said, you know, maybe the Blackhawks aren't mad about this five games because, you know what, Keith and Seabrook are so overworked right now yeah. that given Ke- they're going to get in the playoffs, they're in pretty right. much. Keith giving them a five-game break might be good for the playoffs. How about that? Hey, that's that's not a bad theory. I mean, kind of uh, an example, a couple of years ago, Gonchar got hurt for uh, a long time for the Penguins. And that I think that that actually helped the Penguins and Gonchar in the long run because he was fresh for the playoffs. Yeah, nothing nothing wrong with resting up before right. the toughest time of year. We'll be going to take a quick timeout and be back on the Muck and Grind Show. Welcome back, muckandgrind.tv, Muck and Grind Show. We're going to talk about some more injuries now, quickly. Um, Flyers, Pens, both had a goalie hurt. The Penguins, not so bad. Flurry inadvertently elbowed the head by everyone's favorite defenseman, Paul Martin. Mm-hmm. He went down, apparently not hurt seriously. Brzgalov, seen limping after a loss to Tampa. Chip fracture in his right foot, day-to-day, not playing Thursday. If these injuries were serious, which team has more to lose by losing one of these two goalies. Uh, is it the Flyers or the Penguins? Oh, it's definitely the Penguins. Um, I mean, all you have to do is look that Flurry has the most wins in, in the league right now. Um, and I mean, the Penguins' backup goaltending situation is so bad right now. Um, it, it looks like it looks like Brent Johnson's actually going to be back and probably play on Thursday night against the Islanders. But um, Because Thiessen's been you know, so Thies- bad. Yeah, Thiessen's been pretty bad. But, I mean, Flurry. You know, the, the Penguins have been giving up a lot of goals lately, but they're actually not they're not bad goals on, I mean, last night or um, Wednesday night withstanding, uh, Flurry had a pretty bad game. But um, he, he makes some spectacular saves to keep the Penguins in games. And, yeah. and a lot of times uh, he doesn't get the credit he deserves because the Penguins are scoring so many goals. It's like, oh, he's just riding the wave of this team that scores, you know, seven, True. six goals every night. But uh uh, I would say if it came if in your scenario here, I would say the Penguins would be more hurt if Flurry 
went out rather than if Brzezgalov was out for the Flyers. See, I got to say the Flyers because the Pens, despite them having basically no backup goaltender, are so friggin' talented. They've hit a bump the last three games, but they're so friggin' talented, they just have absolutely dominated everyone for two weeks before that. If they show that in the playoffs, they just need somebody to make 12 saves a night, basically. The Flyers, they're not going to go to the Cup without... Brzezgalov playing the way he had been going like 10-2-1 in March or whatever. They need to ride Brzezgalov to the cup if they're going to get there. So even though they have Bobrovsky, who was great as a rookie and very inconsistent this year, they at least have a backup, but they're not as great of a team. So i got to say it's going to hurt the Flyers more. We we'll agree to disagree in this one, but we got to move on. Bruce Boudreaux, so mad and angry, yelling at the refs, no goal the other night. They were leading... Boston was leading Anaheim 2-1 in the third period. Matt Bolesky goal waved off because Andrew Cogliano allegedly bumps the goalie. However, upon review, it looks like he doesn't even make contact. Do you think it's time to start reviewing these goalie interference calls? Boy, that was a bad call. Um, I mean, all you have to do is watch that video. and Which we're doing right now here. Okay. And the, the ref is pointing that it's a goal. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's, he's in perfect position to see everything that's going on. He points that it's a goal. And Turco puts up no argument. Yeah. He, you know, he just looks dejected that he gave up another goal. And, I, and then there's like a conference 30 seconds after the fact, and then the goal's waved off. And I, I just don't understand that. I think it was more than 30 seconds after the yeah. fact because in the video, all the players are on the bench. They've got the the the, the text up saying Bolesky's right. whatever goal of the season. They're sitting there ready right. for the phase off. All of a sudden, there's this conference. The Bruins go on to win that game by one goal. Anaheim, sure, they're out of it, but mathematically, they're not quite right. out of it yet. Boudreaux lost his marbles, which is always fun to see. You could do is. some interesting lip reading on that one. Yeah. But I'm so against reviewing everything because it's a slippery slope to say, why not review this, this, and this? Mm -hmm. However, once this happens in the playoffs once yeah, or twice, it's going it's, it's to be reviewed, and I think we're going to have to do it, unfortunately. And the other thing I don't want to see is the, the crease roll coming back in where you, know, yeah. you have one skate oh boy. in the crease. Brett Hole. Oh. Brett Hole. Uh, we we got to move on. Uh, Ottawa Senators, Jason Spezza. How sick was this move? I can't even describe it, but you're watching it right now. He faked out the entire Winnipeg Jets lineup pretty much to set up Kyle Turris for the easiest goal he'll ever score yeah. because the work has already been done. Rate Spezza's moves on this. It's Yeah, you're right. It, it's hard to describe. I mean, it, it uh, reminded me a little bit of the goal that Morgan scored earlier this year where he went through the whole Tampa Bay team. Yeah. And, I mean, if you watch that whole game, Spezza was unbelievable in that game. You know, Three that, assists. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, it's just a sick goal. I mean, it's a, probably the top five of the season, I would say. Yeah, right away. It was immediately on the internet. People were losing their minds over it. And, like, he, he faked out the entire team so bad, he faked out some people twice. He faked out the one defenseman twice. He, he first pulls one move where he flips it behind him along the boards, circles around, and then splits two more defensemen. <laughs> It's like, what are you doing? How do you have the stamina and skill yeah. to pull two moves in I, one? I think like he that? actually beat seven guys in that play. I think they went for a line change, and two <laughs> new guys came on, and he beat them, too. He, he probably could have went through the entire lineup. Yeah. Like I said, Kyle Turris on this will never have an easier goal in his career. He had about two seconds with an open net to just put in a little puck. Anybody could have scored. An eight-year-old could have scored. I could have. <laughs> Yeah, you could even score it. That's got to be, if you're going to rate that, that's at least a 9 out of 10. Yeah. It, how about Ottawa, though? Nobody saw them coming. Unfortunate for them, they're in the playoffs, but it looks like they're going to match up with Boston, who Boston's beat them four out of five times a season. Ottawa's been such a great story, but they're probably not going to do too much in the playoffs. Yeah, they're they're fading. <clears throat> they're actually, uh, they're not, they're close to the A seed almost now. I mean, not, they're probably, they're going to end up seventh, but yeah. they, they've, uh, they've been fading fast. They, they had a great game in Winnipeg uh, a couple of days ago, but uh, yeah, they're, they're an older team. Um, and, you know, I've said that throughout the year, oh, they're going to fade, they're going to fade, but they, they've proven me wrong. So, yeah, until you know, the so, late some, stage. Yeah, sometimes those older teams actually, you know, that's a good thing in the playoffs, all that, you know, veteran leadership and all that playoff experience is a good thing, maybe. How many years have people said the old thing about Detroit? Detroit. For about, for about exactly. 15 years now they've said that, and they've won probably three cups in that time. Uh, but unbelievable move, sick move there. All right, how about this? We got to take you. You got to listen to this. The national anthem before the Penguin Senators game. You have to listen. Check it out.
your ears ringing uh, right uh, now? <laughs> How geez. painful is that? And the thing I don't understand about that is they have one of the most iconic anthem singers in the NHL. They do up there, and oh man, that was so bad. Yeah, I forget his name. He's got he wears like yeah, the hat and the, uh, the name fine suit, the epaulets. Yeah, right. Yeah. They, <laughs> we he, when I was when I watched the clip online the next day, I was like, how is this only four and a half minutes long? Because when I watched it live, yeah. I swear it was fifteen minutes long. It's so funny. You see the players just cracking up in the ice. Yeah, Crosby Crosby's and laughing. <laughs> Craig Anderson and James Neal, they're all like yucking it up. It, it reminded me of, uh, for you Simpsons fans out there, the uh, Bleeding Gums Murphy National Anthem <laughs> in the yeah. uh, baseball show. <laughs> yeah. There was also another great line from the Simpsons about the National Anthem. Due to popular demand, we'll now forego the singing of our National Anthem. <laughs> Maybe with this, I couldn't even pronounce this woman's name, Miesha Bergeron Grossman. I don't know how to say it or spell it, but... I feel bad for it, but everyone seemed to enjoy it or at least have a laugh at it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Better luck next time. Yeah, I'm not going to go out there and sing, so I don't have the guts for that. Anyway, for next time, we'll be back next week. Muckandgrind.tv. I'm your host, Caleb Morgan. I'm Vince Comino. Check us out next time. Muckandgrind.tv. Tune in next time for another episode of the Muck and Grind Show. Or check out past episodes anytime at www.muckandgrind.tv.